That's right. It's the moment you've been waiting for. It is time for a tutorial. A serum tutorial. People always stop me on the street and ask, Hey, hey Dylan, how, how do you make your sounds? How do you make your basses? Well, I'm about to show you how. Side note, what I'm about to show you isn't exclusive to FL Studio. This can be done in any DAW of choice. Any door of choice. And these basses can be used in any genre as well. Electro, dubstep, trap, future bass, bass house. The list goes on. As you could have guessed from the, the title of this video, we'll be using Serum today. So open Serum. Oh wait. Once Serum is open, before you do anything else, I want you to route it to a mixer track. So go to your mixer, and this is a shortcut. This is a, a Dylan Tolteef trade secret. Press Control L, bam, bam. There it is. It's in the, it's in the mixer. So, once you've routed Serum to a mixer track, I want you to open two plugins, Omicide and OTT. O Omicide is a multiband distortion plugin, and you don't even have to do anything. Just leave it on the default preset. That's it. Then open OTT. And OTT, you might want to change a few things, like I usually put the depths down to like 90 or something like that. OTT is a really great compressor. It's free and made by this dude called Steve Duda. Um, I don't think he made any other plugins, but uh, this one that he did make was very good. And we can always come back to these plugins and change them later. That's the the wonders of, of making music is that it's never set in stone. Uh, and that's it for now. We, like I said, we can come back here and change stuff. But back in Serum, this is what I want you to do. Open a massive wavetable. See, I have these wavetables that are literally that were literally recorded from Massive, from the native instrument Massive plugin synth. Synth. I forgot to mention you can find these wavetables online. Just Google Massive Serum Wavetable, you'll find it. I believe in you. See, so it changes from square to sword, just like it did in the default wavetable for Massive. This is what it sounds like. And you can already hear the, the compression and distortion coming from Omicide and OTT. See, this is without. And this is with. Big difference. You hear it, it's a lot more compressed. But, um... We're going to turn this down because we're making basses today. So this is this is right click, and then you can like make it go down octaves. Oh, that's fat. That's a fat. That's a fat bass right there. I'm sorry. I'm just, I just had to jam out for a second. So we got we got our sore. This is going to be our the basis of our whole sound really, and. Then I want you to turn on this filter and go to the MISC, which stands for miscellaneous, mi miscellaneous, and choose one of these three filters down here, combed, combs, all passes, or reverb. Uh, I guess reverb is good for now. I like to call these filters the, the magic filters. I don't actually call them that, but they do do magic to the sound. Wow, that's a that's a big difference. The literally magic is happening. If so, like that's the thing. You kind of got to hold your note down, hold a note down, and then move this to get the motion in a really awesome bass sound. But like I have to do that with my mouse. So if it was only a way, so that would move without my mouse moving the whole time. If only there was a way. Yeah, it's an LFO. That's right, we got an LFO there, so that's pretty cool. And you know what, as, as we're working with LFOs, I want you to put LFO in like, on this as well. Put it there. Maybe turn this down a bit. Um, this is also another really cool trick. Is that if you hold down Shift Alt and then click, you can change this from bipolar to 
unipolar, I believe is the correct terms. So there, that starts, that's the starting point, and then it goes all the way to the end. But if you turn, you do the shift alt click, then it goes back and forth like that. But I prefer it like this because I just think it's better like that. See, the even at small amounts, big things are still happening. See, it's not the size, but how you use it. All right, now we got this going. Uh, and put a LFO on the level for good measure. It's getting pretty dubstepy, pretty rhythmy, if, if you guys know what I mean by that. Um, this, of course, changes the speed. We're not done there yet. Um, so, go to effects. And this is going to be weird, but get a filter. Get a filter. And, of course, filters, you know, they usually they take things away. But we want to get a high pass filter. And you might be thinking, high pass? Why? High pass is going to get rid of the bass. We're making a bass sound. Why are we. We'll put a LFO. Just, just, do, just do that. You're right, that doesn't sound that great. But when we put this stuff up, just. We suddenly got a lot more motion. Like, if you can see this area, like there's a lot more stuff happening. It makes the bass sound a lot more interesting. I'm going to choose a different filter just to see what it sounds like. And of course, you can change all these stuff as well. And now we're kind of creating a more envelope shape for our LFO. And this is also important because at the moment, this is set to off. Really, we want this on trigger. So every time we press a key, it'll restart the LFO, else it'll just keep running. And every time we press it, it won't sync up. So. So. There are other effects which are actually really great as well. You got distortion, of course, which is going to make it a lot more, you know, just beefier. And the hyper dimension. Usually, what a good starting point for this is just put this size all the way down to 0%. Uh, it still is active at 0%, so you can turn this up in the mix. And you got definitely that room straight away. Big difference. You might not like it, it might not be great in the mix, but it does sound pretty cool on its own. Uh, so we'll just leave it on for now. And lastly, compression. Good old compression. This is, I think, pretty much just OTT, but then in the FX plugins. So uh, start off with like... This time it's not a real big difference, but it can have like huge differences from like turning a muddy sound into a real nice, crispy, clear, bassy sound. Um, so keep that in mind. It does work very well for what it does. Now there's more you can do, like putting this sub here. And it's interesting if you put to direct out, see what happens, what the difference is. What um, I think you should do is also turn that down to zero and then put this on. So now the sub moves in the same sort of amplitude with the, the level of this square soar hybrid thing. So. All right, and another great tip is putting this EQ here, making these little peaks, but also reverse peaks. So those are just like, like cuts, I guess. And putting the LFO on these frequencies. So now the these little things are moving, and it's just like this, similar to the, the high pass, because what the high pass is doing, it's like moving along the spectrum with, with a resonance little notch. 
So it's going wow, wow, and that's very vocally. It's great for vocal basses, and we can do this for the in the other direction as well. So I've explained how to set up a good basis for your bass sound, but there's a lot more possibilities. Uh, like adding the LFO, as you can see here, on a lot more things than just wavetable and cutoff and level. But mixing and putting it on mixing or uh, drive knobs or FMing one wave with another will create really interesting sounds and more possibilities. If you open up the presets that are in the description of this video, you'll see a lot of different variations. Um, no two presets are the same, of course, but there are a lot of different concepts and ideas that I haven't even began to touch on. Another few things I forgot to say, often I'll use a separate synth, like Massive, dedicated to the sub. This way you make sure you have a solid low end that you have more control over. In that case, you might want to high pass some of your serum bases so the sub and the serum bass don't clash. It might not be necessary in every case, but it will definitely help in keeping a cleaner mix. If you take a look at my post-processing here on these different sounds, you'll see that it's never just, it's not always just Omerside and OTT, but this one has an EQ afterwards. Um, there's different things you can do such as bit crushing and adding vocoders and uh, just different types of distortion will create different noises, different bass sounds, different possibilities. Something that you can definitely use in your own productions. That pretty much touches all the all the points I wanted to make here today on Serum and uh, creating interesting bass sounds. The Not just interesting, but the best, as the title of this video says. Because it is true. These are the best bass sounds in the world. I'd like to give a mention to Silent for his streams, for his Twitch streams. I learned a great deal about bass designs and uh, I think this video and a uh, big part of my remix with featuring these bass sounds wouldn't really be possible without watching those, without learning, without having watched them. So I would definitely recommend uh, any aspiring producers to try and catch some of his streams if you can. Well, that's all we have time for today. I certainly had fun, and I'll see you next time. That's pretty much it. I'm, this is my first tutorial. <laughs>